What's going on, everybody? Surprise, surprise, got another Beretta comparison for you. So ever since I did my comparison about the uh, Elite LTT and the uh, 92, or sorry, the 96 Brigadier Elite 2, I've had a lot of people ask me if I can compare the Elite LTT to the Beretta's new line of the 92X. And it just so happens that I own one, so why not? Everyone loves making videos about their favorite series of guns, so let's rock. So, uh, just gonna go over the two pistols today. I'm gonna try and keep the video fairly short if I can. Um, what, what do we wanna go over is just features of the guns, comparisons, pricing, you know, the usual stuff. Uh, and, and just um, see if maybe you're in the market for one or the other, which one might be a, a better option for you. So, uh, let's just get right into it. We'll start with the Elite LTT. So the Elite LTT is um, Langdon's version of what we would call the perfect Beretta 92. So what, what uh, Langdon Tactical did, Ernest Langdon, um, was he took like a Beretta 92, he took the things he liked about it, the things he hated about it, and fixed it. The 92X, not to be confused with the 92X Performance, which is like the Ferrari of the Beretta world now, um, this guy here is kind of Beretta's version of what they would call the perfect Beretta 92. Um, it's basically, this is what Beretta's customers said they wanted, and this is what Ernest Langan said he wanted. So, <laughs> simple as that. Let's go over them. So, uh, coming up, we're basically going to work our way top to bottom. I'm going to go back and forth on the two pistols, just so we don't kind of lose our train of thought, because, you know, my mind tends to wander. So, uh, the Langan Tactical, right up top, um, has got a fiber optic front sight and a serrated rear sight. So it's, it's, it's a combat style. This is not a night sight. This is not tritium, anything like that. This is more of a, like a target sight. And as you can see, when the light hits it right, it just glows, which is always a lovely feature. So that's the sight setup that the Langdon design went with. Beretta did something fairly similar, but not quite. So the Beretta model, again, it's got a serrated rear sight, an orange front sight, but... The front sight, it's just paint. It's just a, it's just a painted dot. This is not, it's not tritium. It's not a night sight, anything like that. It, it, it's a combat sight is basically the, the way to describe it, which is set up um, again for like target or combat shooting kind of thing. Both the front sights on both pistols are removable. So they're using the vertex style slide. Everyone likes a removable front sight. Uh, unlike older Berettas that have a fixed sight where what you have is what you get and you got to deal with it. So that's the setup that, uh, that the, the sights go to. Now, continuing our way down, the 92X, um, for a brand new production gun, kind of caught me off guard, doesn't have front cocking serrations. Now, me personally, I could, I could give or take on front cocking serrations, but given the fact that we're now in 2020 and we have a modern day, like an upgraded, updated Beretta 92 that still doesn't have front cocking serrations, little surprising. The Langdon model, uh, does indeed have front cocking serrations. So he's got standard front and rear Beretta style cocking serrations. Everyone always likes, uh, so you can, you know, load your gun, do your press check. Everyone likes to do the press checking. <laughs> so that's something. Uh, up top, uh, the Langdon model, unlike the, the 92X, has got a stainless steel barrel. Now, there is no advantage or disadvantage of a stainless steel barrel. You know, a, a lot of people are, you know, oh, stainless steel, like it's so much better. Um, it looks pretty. It, 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 it gives the gun a nice two-tone style look to it. But uh, according to Langdon himself, um, the reason there's a stainless steel barrel is cosmetics. <clears throat> it gives the gun a nice look. It's a two-tone look. Is there an advantage over a stainless steel barrel compared to a blued barrel? No. A stainless steel barrel doesn't show wear the same way a blued barrel does, but aside from that, it's, there's no um, performance-enhancing difference between the two, so that's something to consider. Oh, well, not really to consider. Um, continuing on, so the Langdon model ships as what we call the G-Series. So a, a G-Series pistol is basically, if the hammer's cocked, if I activate the safety decocker, all it does is decock. So this flicks back up on its own. That's That's... that's factory like that. That's how it comes from Langdon. So that setup is generally the most preferred over the Beretta 92 lineup. Uh, most people, I'd say about 95% of people who own Beretta 92s would actually prefer the, sa or the decocker over something like the standard safety decocker. Now, the Langdon model, as this is a vertex slide and this is a conversion, 
Should you decide you don't like the, the G-Series decocker and you actually want the safety decocker, you can convert it back. That's no, that's no big issue. Um, just as a point of reference, I just so happen to have my 92 compact here. So this one is a safety decocker. So right now the hammer's cocked. If I flick the safety on, it decocks the pistol like it's supposed to, but the safety stays on. So now the firing, the firing mechanism is completely disabled. So th this is generally a not so desirable feature. Uh, main reason for it is what I call active, accidental activation. So someone's shooting, 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 my gun runs dry. Oh, guns out of ammo, slap the new mag in, overhand it. First thing they do is when they overhand it, they ride that safety down. Again, guns decog. So what happens is people think, oh, my gun jam, tap, rack. Don't oh, my gun still, oh, no, my gun's not jam, safety. So that's something that is not a overly desirable feature on modern day produced handguns. So that's something to consider. The 92X ships like that. Um, Beretta has SKUs for both the decock and the, the uh, safety decocker. This one specifically, about an hour ago, I converted over. So this one was like you saw on the compact. It was a uh, safety decocker. I have since converted it to a decock only because that's my preference. I prefer the, uh, I prefer the decock only. So that's something I did myself. Working our way back, um, the Beretta 92X has got a standard just like a 92 hammer. Whereas the Elite LTT has what we call the Elite 2 skeletonized. So Langan's mindset behind that was with a skeletonized hammer, you have slightly faster lock time, which basically means when I pull the trigger, this hammer falls a slight bit faster than, uh, than the standard 92 hammer. Now, visually, I don't see a difference. Uh, I'm sure like if you counted it down to milliseconds, there probably is a difference, but in the grand scheme of things, it's in my opinion, a kind of oversold feature. That being said, it does look sexy. Uh, continuing on the Langan tactical, they did another thing right at the back of, at the back of the pistol, they've beveled the back of the slide. So you see how it kind of angles upwards. People who have really high grips have complained that these guns actually leave track marks on their hands. Now I've personally never experienced this. I don't have very big hands, but I mean, that's another thing that Langdon can say that they did. Working our way down. So as we go down, both pistols have a standard three slot 1913 pick rail. Um, they use an M9A1 frame. So it's, the, it's got the standard pick rail and it's got the front and rear uh, checkering, not just a standard cut. It's got its actual checkering on both the front and the rear of the frame. So that's an M9A1 frame. Other differences are the Langdon has got a stainless steel trigger. Um, you can get options with the Langdon Tactical where it actually has his trigger job done to it, or what we call a trigger job in a bag. And it gives you one of the most incredible double action uh, pulls on, a, on the 92 series. It, it's pretty hard to beat. This one does not have that feature. Unfortunately, living here in Canada, the, the LTTs with the trigger job are not available here. Um, we can only get the LTTs, so it is what it is. It's still, it's still got the D hammer spring, stainless steel trigger. It still has a very good, you know, uh, eight pound double action trigger. It's, it's very acceptable in my books. The 92 X, however, this one caught me off guard. So this guy here, standard blue, uh, trigger, it is metal. Both the triggers on them are metal. Um, for those of you who are concerned about that has got the single most, or the, it's got the best double action trigger I've ever felt on a factory gun. It is the smoothest pull I've ever felt. Like, watch this. That trigger, um, the double action trigger breaks at 7.7 .7 pounds, almost consistently. Uh, we pulled it five times. I had 7.7, 7.7, 7.8, 7.7, 7.8. very consistent. Like, I've never seen a double action trigger be that consistent and just that smooth. Like, I, I, it, I, I couldn't tell you what it is but it's got one of the smoothest double actions I've ever felt. So that's just, that's just something to, to let you know of. I don't know why mine's like that, but it is. Um, another feature um, on the undercut of the trigger guard, I don't know, yeah, so you can actually kind of see it. The Langdon, uh, what they did on the grip was they actually undercut the trigger guard a bit more. Again, for people, primarily with people with bigger hands, uh, you get people that would start to get like a knuckle. You'd see like a nice little bump on their knuckle there from the, uh, the slide wear or the frame wearing on them. Um, so Langdon undercut that, so you kind of alleviate that. Again, I've never personally experienced that, but it is, uh, it is something. 
Another thing I forgot to mention while we're up here, the Langdon ships with a stainless steel guide rod, stainless steel factory right like out of the gun. The 92X <sighs> ships with uh, a plastic fluted guide rod. Now, not that there's anything wrong with plastic. There absolutely is not. They work just fine. They hold up just fine. Um, I, however, I have converted mine to, uh, not converted, but swapped out for a stainless steel guide rod. Personal preference, nothing more. Working our way down, both the pistols have got Beretta's new enhanced uh, oversized uh, magazine release. Um, that's pretty standard on all new Berettas. It's a lot better than that little button you used to have on the standard 92FS and those ones. So that's something. The biggest difference between these two pistols is going to be the grip. So both of which kind of went their own way on the grip. So Beretta, what they did was they created a, a rough texture grip. Now this one, I can only describe it as very similar to the RTF2 finish on the like Beretta, or not the Beretta, the Beretta I got Beretta on my mind, on the, the Glock, like the Glock 17 or the Glock 22 RTF2. It's very, very aggressive. It's not quite as aggressive as the RTF finish, but it's close. And I love it. I love the feel of that grip. It's very, very, very aggressive. Especially if you have sweaty hands, you're shooting outside. It's, this is the grip you want on this gun. The Langdon gun, and actually, before I go there, this one also has the wraparound grip on it. So this one actually ships with two different grips, um, which I will get into shortly. But basically, this one still has a standard S-curve grip, uh, enhanced with the, uh, the, the textured finish. The Langman gun did something a little bit differently. So they actually chose to maintain the, uh, the 92 uh, uh, FS grip there. So with the standard S, like the S curve, what they did was they reduced the circumference of the palm swell. So what these are, these are what call, Langman calls the ultra thin, or the VZ ultra thin grips. Now VZ grips makes these custom for Langman Tactical, as you can tell by their logo engraved on it. Um, so these ones, they have like a diamond like texture. It's not anywhere near as aggressive as the, the 92X grip. However, it is still, it's more aggressive than a standard 92FS grip. But the biggest sell is it's thin. So when you grab onto this, this does not feel like a Beretta 92. Like if you've shot a 92FS or M9A1, you'll pick this up and you'll be like, wow, that doesn't feel like a 92. It, it, it feels smaller, which is what you want. You, you want the gun to feel smaller. So point of reference, uh, my hand size is medium. I, I, I wear medium gloves, so you can see how this fits in my hand. Really enjoy those grips. So what the 92X did was they did something a little bit different. So they give you the option of the standard 92FS grip, which personally I prefer. I actually prefer the S-series grip. But you also, let's say that's too big for you. Well, let's say, like even with the Elite LTT, where that grip is still too big, what you can do is go to the Vertec grip. So with the 92X, if you don't like the S style grip, you can go with the what Beretta calls their Vertec grip, which is basically a straight back 1911 style grip. And it is substantially smaller than a standard 92FS grip. Like as soon as you grab this, you're, you, like you, honestly, what's gonna go through your mind is holy shit, that's small. Like it, it, it's very small compared to uh, compared to the standard 92 grip. Honestly, what it feels like to me is like a double stack 1911. That's what it feels like. So when you grab the Vertec compared to a 92 FS, think double stack 1911. It does feel good though. So the 92X kind of has an advantage over the Elite because it can tailor to a larger grouper grouper. Larger grouper, larger group of shooters. So that's that's an advantage disadvantage you could say. Now that's more or less the features, the way the setup is. The biggest thing, realistically, um, now remember when I get into pricing here, understand that I live in Canada. All right, so these both of these guns came out from the United States. So when I tell you my price, you you know a lot of people love to comment on the videos. Holy oh, Christ, you paid double what I did when I live in the States. I understand that. And I understand that while you think my price is a bit of a ripoff, there's a couple factors you need to understand. Our firearms are bought using the US dollar. So when distributors bring them in, they bring them in, at, or when our importers bring them in, they bring it in under US dollar, which is then converted to Canadian dollar. So the Canadian dollar right now sucks 
compared to the US dollar. I think we're sitting at like 74 cents to date of this video. So we're 74 cents on the dollar to you guys. So there is a price difference there. Then the other thing you got to understand is cost. So Beretta builds these pistols. They, they have to mark them up a bit to make their money on them. The exporter ships them out. They have to mark it out up a bit to get their money out of it. The importer brings them in here in Canada. They have to put their hands in it, put some, you know, make some money on it. When it comes across the border, the government's got to tax it because, of course, the government's got to get their tax money out of it. So there's another cost. Then it's got to hit a retailer, and then the retailer's got to, you know, mark it up a bit to make their money. And then, of course, you've got sales tax. So again, the government's got to get on that and get get their hands in that so they can make some more money off it. And then you end up with our price. So that's something to consider. Now, now that you know that, the Beretta 92X full size, this is the full size, mind you. They also have the Centurion in compact available. Um, runs about $1,250 here in Canada. All right. So $1,250, give or take, depending on where you buy it, you'll usually see about $100 variance. The Langdon Tactical Elite LTT goes for about $1,500, just shy of $1,600. So there is a fairly substantial price difference between the two. Now, do the features of the Langdon outweigh the 92X? Some would say yes, some would say no. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. If I could only pick one, but because I'm, I'm an addict, uh, I have a gun buying disorder for Berettas, I buy them all, so I don't really care. Uh, <laughs> um, which would I buy? If, if, if you put the two in front of me, said there's only one you could buy, which one would you buy? I would buy the 92X. I'm in no way talking down about the Elite LTT. I love the Elite LTT. It is my favorite Beretta that I own. Hands down, no questions asked. It's my favorite Beretta I own. The reason I would buy the 92X is twofold. Price, because you get lots of features at $400 less, and the grip. So what I mean by the grip is the texturing obviously is a huge sell for me because it's so aggressive. I love it. The texturing is, is one of the biggest sells for me, but the other is the Vertec grip. If I don't like the 92S style grip, I can change it. The Elite LTT, I can't do that. The Elite LTT, while I can change the grips, and it does have the ultra thin grips, which I adore, um, I'm stuck with the S-curve. If I don't like that S-curve, I'm pooched. I, I, I shouldn't buy the Elite LTT. With the 92X, I have the option. If I don't like it, I can change it. So that's the sole reason I would pick the 92X over the Elite LTT. I know that doesn't sound like me. I know I actually generally prefer the more expensive gun, but what I'm telling you is if I could only have one, I'm gonna buy the 92X. Thanks everybody for watching, and I will see y'all next time.